It's just another way to visualize things. Nextstrain.org is a resource I use a lot. Just watch this here. Right in the middle of this graph, that's basically the original coronavirus, if you want to call it that. And all the variants which have sprung up from there, this is beta over on this side, delta, that's actually all of these here. It's not just one, it's actually multiple strains of the delta variant. This is Omicron, right there, that small dot over on the left, the yellow one, just to give you a little perspective of how it compares to the rest of the coronavirus as it has developed. Dr. Bharat Pankania with us now, senior clerical, clinical lecturer at the University of Exeter's Medical School and expert in infectious disease control with us from Bath in the United Kingdom. Always nice to have you uh, with us, doctor. We are taught or we are told and we have been told for a long time to trust the science. Is the problem right now that we don't actually have the science and that a lot of people, including the WHO, are saying we'll know more in two weeks time and in the meantime, everyone's freaking out about it. You're so right. And the, the answer is uh, the science is not being followed because the science does not know the answer. And the reason why science does not know the answer is this thing appeared on the 24th of November. And now several scientists all over the world are looking into how it behaves. Is it more transmissible? Is it more disease causing? Is it bypassing the vaccines? Is it going to become the new Delta variant dominant variant? We don't know answers to all these things. And unfortunately, politicians the world over have targeted certain African countries and put in restrictions when actually the virus may have arisen from any part of the world. We don't know. It's just that South Africa identified it and highlighted the concerns. You know what just nags at the back of my head, though, is the idea about erring on the side of caution and the fact that, yeah, we don't know if this will be another Delta, but it could be. And really, we could lose two weeks in the meantime. Yes, so we have already, especially in the United Kingdom, not been assiduous in controlling the Delta outbreak. And we do the partial infection control measures only, which is talk about boosters, boosters, and boosters all the time. We're not controlling it in schools. We're not controlling it via the wearing of masks, wearing them properly in crowded places. So we mustn't forget Delta, mm. and we also must be very measured about Omicron uh, until we know more about it. So it's all politics, isn't it? I mean, invariably, things do come down to politics. And maybe, maybe people should just exercise their own caution. And regardless of what their government say, wear a mask, social distance if you can, keep washing your hands, just do the basics which we've been doing. Yes, we've been doing them for 18 months to two years time. But actually, those are probably the first and foremost and the best lines of defence in the first place. Yes, absolutely. And it is just common sense that infection control and prevention of infections is a multi-layered thing. And if everyone did the multi-layered thing, despite what our populist politicians wish to say, we would be in a better place. And scientifically speaking, I think we are already in a better place because of the number of people immunized in Europe. Mm. Unfortunately, in Africa, we haven't got around to immunizing a significant proportion. And I feel if need be, if really, really, really need be, another vaccine with a reformulation to mirror what the Omicron virus is doing, would also provide additional protection if needed. So the long-term picture, just to focus on Africa again, as you did in your first answer, the long-term thing is we've got to get people vaccinated. Their vaccination rates are just too low across Africa. It's as simple as that. So there needs to be vaccine equity. More people need to be vaccinated. That's the long-term picture. In the short term, we see governments that have decided, right, just cut it off, cut off the travel, close the borders. What's the in, in your opinion, what's the in-between? What, what could be done that isn't so harsh in the short term? Well, we, we need to um, not forget the other infection control measures, but again, this is a wake up call for Africa. People like myself have been saying for over a year that we need to help Africa. And really, it isn't a case of just supply the vaccines. It is the supply, the, the logistics, the information, the advice, the setting up of the clinics, the needles, the syringes, the swabs, all that logistics. The Europeans are very rich with it, and they should be setting up that, that 
that facility now for when the vaccines become available? Uh, look, there's so much we can talk about. I do like talking to you, Dr. Vallat. Thank you so much yes. for your time and your, uh, your, your calm perspective there. Very helpful. Thank you.